Yo guys, it's Slimer. You already know that today we are back playing some more Danganronpa V3. Today we are starting the class trial for Chapter 3. I am very excited for this, but I am going in expecting this to take a long time, and I expect it to be pretty difficult because I cannot begin to tell you how Angie was killed, uh, and there's going to be a lot of discussion between both Angie's murder and Tenko's murder. So we're going to see what we can learn, who's the culprit, Oh man, I have no idea. I definitely, my two theories are, I think uh, Keo could be uh, one option just because of the placement of uh, his research lab and uh, just the fact that he's been very prominent in this chapter. The other theory is that there is somebody else within the uh, student council that had similar feelings to Tenko that wanted to overthrow Angie and took it a step further to actually bring her down. So those are my two theories uh, that I could see being plausible, and you know, if one of those turns out to be right, then hey, I uh, I was at least able to use the information to to make a, a guess beforehand. But like I said, as long as I have enough information by the time that the game actually forces me to guess, then I should be fine. Um, but we shall shall see. I'm just going to kind of look through these just to make sure that I'm updated with everything. She's got a forehead injury. And there's some blood duct tape uh, stuck to her hair. Okay, we have the Necronomicon uh, that was used for the Resurrection Ritual. These effigies hung upside down, I have no idea. Skullleaf Katana, it was like stuck in the door, but it had some blood on the end. Um, which is interesting, and it was taken from Kyo's lab. So the back door has a sliding lock, and the front door... Uh, handle the sliding lock moves at the slightest touch. I wonder if, like, maybe... Uh, I actually thought about this between the last time that I played in this. I wonder if uh, the ka Katana could, like, actually squeeze through... Um, hit like the either the handle or the lock or something like that and, and that was like able to unlock the door for some reason I, I don't know if that's exactly it but they seem to make some reference that maybe it's not impossible to uh, to you know pick the lock of one of the doors uh, without doing it the way that um, um, Kokichi did it to, to get us in and the front door has the cylindrical lock and uh, Kokichi seemed to be like the only one that could actually open it so we shall see uh, the fact that he can lock pick uh, alright what's the movie's account Angie had locked herself in the Ultimate Artist Lab since yesterday, working on the ritual. She would not unlock the door unless someone from the student council asked her to. Um, but I don't know how much that's going to come into play, just because, yes, she could have let somebody from the student council in, but then somebody... Well, actually, yeah, that actually could work. Um, and then as somebody left, maybe they were able to lock the door from the outside somehow. So maybe instead of uh, breaking in, somebody was able to lock the door from outside of the door. Specifically, that sliding lock. Uh, all right, then we have the cage child ritual, which I remember most of the details, so that should be fine. It was flashlight function. Don't entirely know why that is a truth bullet. We'll see how that comes into play. And then we have Tanko's last moments. Um, injury in the back of the neck was deep, but probably not enough to kill her immediately. So she was alive for at least a few seconds before dying. You have the iron cage and the magic circle. There's a hole in the corner and there's some stuff under the floor. The white sheet had some blood over it. Dog statue. I uh, don't exactly... Oh, I mean, there might be somebody being like, oh, maybe somebody did something during it. And it's just like... I, I don't know. If it's anything that is not related to being under the floor, the dog statue is going to refute that pretty easily because uh, Tenko is not moving away from that spot if there is a 170-pound statue above her in the position that she was in. Uh, and then the sound during seance, obviously very important. Loose floorboard, also probably important. Marker stone... Not entirely sure if that's uh, important or not. We shall see. Cross piece under the floor. That's probably going to be... This cross piece thing is probably going to confuse me at some point whenever it does come up, but hopefully we'll get there. So we have the dry blood under the floor, sickle under the floor. That was probably the murder weapon. And then bloody Kokichi, uh, just because he... Didn't he just, like, trip and fall, though? Oh, he had stepped through one of the floorboards. Right, right, right. Okay, so that also had a, a cross piece cut off. Okay, so that's, that's where that's important. All right. Now that I've sort of refreshed myself, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, you know how class trials go, I'm just going to start playing, and I should have enough time set aside in this day that I should be able to play the whole thing, and however many episodes it gets cut into is how many episodes uh, it gets cut into. So, let's begin this wild ride, the Chapter 3 class trial. I assume everyone is here. Let's get it going. Oh, there's definitely less people. It's Oh man, and by next chapter, there's going to be so few people left. It would appear that we all, I have all gathered, but it seems there are less and less of us. I just made the same uh, observation. Those friends made it much harder to solve mystery. Don't worry. Well, don't worry. I'm sure you've gotten a little smarter by now, Ganta. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Ganta do his best to help. Mm. I want you to graduate from super idiot uh, level to at least Kaito idiot level. 
What? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Are you okay? Uh, more importantly, are you okay, Kato? Ah. Yeah, I'm feeling better now. Wow, Makiro sure does pack a punch. I don't know. It's your fault. <laughs> no need to worry about our dwindling numbers. Only dipshits have died so far. No, I'm pretty sure everybody that's died so far has been a better character than you. <laughs> uh, we'll see if I if I uh, stand by that statement in the future. We'll see. Uh, I know it's a tall order, but uh, try to use your brains this time, so I don't have to use mine. Booyah! Let's go and bring uh, sells mine or a gift to the entire world. Unacceptable. So every time you open your mouth, you become less likable. <laughs> Rest in peace. Atua, please, please lend us your power. But it may be difficult for us to rely on Atua, considering what happened to Angie, whom Atua loved most of all. You shouldn't have relied on uh, Atua in the first place. But seriously, it's kind of funny seeing a robot believe in God, especially Atua. I also... So what? Robots can believe in God. Indeed. Actually, before I even met Angie, I had a similar experience. Hearing voices, I mean. <laughs> you might call it an inner voice. It tells you what to do when, uh, whenever I'm in trouble. Got a minute? How long are you going to say that for? Atua and Ghost don't matter right now. Jeez. Now, the trial uh, this time is going to be rough. We got caught in Monokuma's trap. Huh? His trap? That's right. Probably made the fourth floor so scary on purpose to prevent me from investigating. No, we didn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. Kaito, you're so dumb. <laughs> hey, so. Shuichi, you say something. Honestly, Kaito, I feel like you should probably just not talk for like this entire class trial because I'm, I'm half convinced you're just gonna like faint as soon as we start talking about this again, and uh, I don't think you're gonna be much help. Huh? What should I say? Uh, I mean, do we just wanna? Oh. Do we just wanna go in, or do I have to like? Yeah, okay. I was like, do I have to talk to anybody extra? I was like, I feel like we have all the information we need. And I don't think anybody's gonna give us anything more from, from here on out, so I wanna get this class trial started. Yeah, you go, Monokuma statue, bye. Have a good time under the water. We'll see you later. Oh boy. As usually, we walked with the elevator in silence. As soon as uh, we remaining survivors stepped aboard, we went down the elevator. Cool stuff. We descended. Yep. That's how elevators work. Perhaps because there are fewer of us, the elevators seem to move faster. I don't know how that works. Uh, and so we fall faster and faster downward into the black. The elevator stops, and just like always, the doors part us slowly. The light that shines on us from the other side, the bright light of our future. Or is it? Uh -oh. Boy, they, they look really depressed. Must be because there's even less participants now. I do find it interesting that in this game, they just kind of keep the trial grounds the same every time. Uh, they put in a lot of effort in a lot of other areas of the game, so like it's not a bad thing. And also, this is a cool uh, class trial design. But... A part of me does miss the uh, the different aesthetics for the for the class trial in each chapter from from Dang and Rapid Doom. Hmm. Don't say they look depressed or make Monodam sad. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder who Monodam's going to kill this time. I would think Mono. Hmm, who would be next? Mono Fanny, maybe. I don't know. Or Mono Taro. I'm not sure which one makes more sense. I I still feel like he's got to kill one of them. <laughs> well, as much as I love to keep hearing this adorable back and forth. Let's hurry up and get this started. At last class trial will begin. I hope it, uh, you enjoy it to your heart's content. I will try. Their class trial is about to begin. Angie Yonaga, the ultimate artist. She created the ultimate uh, academy student council to try and prevent this killing game. Then Tenko Chabashira, the ultimate Aikido master. She hated men, but I knew that she hated this terrible killing game even more. The two who were killed were both uh, trying to stop the killing. Seems to be a, a theme that sort of happens. Well, I guess chapter two didn't really follow that theme, but... And who was the one who killed them? Was it one person? Oh, this screen has five... Hold on, hold on, hold on. All five of these people are still alive. There's no way that you're gonna keep this whole screen of people there. One of these people did it. It's either Kyo or Samugi or Kibo. 100%, 100%, locking that in right now. Because there's no way after three chapters, you can still have one screen full of like alive people. That would be like half the people left. Every other screen has like a couple of uh, people like dead. 
That that second screen. Mm -mm, I don't trust it. Uh, we need to pin that down. This class trial. In order to live, we need to, we have to find the truth. I'm gonna forget who was even on that screen, but <laughs> by the time it actually gets to me guessing, uh, and I will fight for it. I'll fight with truth and lies in this class trial. Okay. Uh, no, I don't need to save. I'll be fine. Hopefully, I don't regret that uh, at some point. Do I have? All right, so I can buy skills. All right, ooh, all right. I have like five. Do you buy them with like the friendship fragments or something? Cause I don't think I've gotten five of them, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Maximum influence a little. Mm, let's see. What what else would be better? Yeah, actually, do I even have an option to get something else? Oh, here we go. There's a there's a few over here. Those Z points effective. Mm, silences all conversations except those the reticle is on. Oh, I mean that sounds pretty good. It's at least silences loud voices. I mean that also sounds really good. Come from the start. Uh, I don't feel like I need that. I feel like I do pretty good at those. The attack's gonna light up more frequently. Oh, for the Hangman's Gambit, okay. You know, I like I like this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna set this one. There we go. Uh, and I don't have enough to buy anymore, so that is our skill list for now. Let's go ahead and start the class trial. <laughs> now then, let's begin with the basic explanation of the class trial. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. During the trial, you'll present your arguments for who the culprit is and vote for who done it. Vote correctly, and only the blackened will be punished. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. And that person will graduate from this academy. Also, refusing to vote will result in your death. So you better vote for someone. I'm sure everybody would vote. Smiles, everyone. It's showtime. Let's get this crazy awesome trial underway. Man, where are we even going to start? I don't think I'm going to be much help this time. Yeah, we already know. Because of Monokuma's disruptions i couldn't do a thorough investigation i can tell monokuma is overcompensating to hide his self-consciousness next time spend less time fixing your hair and more time investigating spaceman oh he said next time that means kaito's innocent shut up i don't need to hear some comedy act from you two weirdos who did it who killed angie and tenko do not let your emotions hasten your judgment. There may be two killers. That is true. That's gonna be so confusing if there is. So, our other culprit might not be one of us here. Oh boy, alright, so we're starting with the resurrection ritual. Hmm? What do you mean? The transfer student. <laughs> do you have to talk like that? Do you have to talk like a ghost? Maybe our resurrected transfer student dragged Angie and Tenko into the grave. There's no shot that they dragged Tenko into the grave first off. Uh, and I <laughs> I have doubts that they killed Angie as well. Stop it! Stop making stuff up! Say something, Shuichi. It'll be a mess if this keeps going on. Is it even possible for a revived corpse to be the culprit? Well, in the interest of being thorough, I should clear things up here. Alright, how are we going to clear this up? How do we know that a living person did it? Uh. This crime was committed by the recently deceased. Hmm. They came back to life and killed two of our classmates. No! Three. So, ritual did work? Uh. Who was resurrected, I wonder. Angie did say did she work. was gonna bring Rantaro back. Uh, but we haven't seen Rantaro. Was resurrected. The culprit is the late Rantaro Amami. Okay, so I have to be able to. I have to be able to disprove that using one of these things. This is about reviving the dead. I have to focus on their statements. Were all those statements correct? Can I look at uh 2 a.m. 
fatal stab wound. Okay, I don't think that directly goes against anything. Suddenly the last the injury on the victim's forward was not bleeding as much as it should. Oh, I bet the duct tape is, has something to do with that. Um What about the Necronomicon? Resurrect prepare an effigy of the dead soul you wish to contact. Everyone may participate. Size and shape of the effigy is irrelevant. Uh Burn this Necronomicon. All right, so the Necronomicon, the whole ritual wasn't performed. All right, that's going to be my guess. Is I, I'm pretty sure the whole ritual wasn't performed. So I think the Necronomicon is going to uh, be the thing that argues against one of the points. Because nobody came back to life if the ritual wasn't fully completed. Uh, there we go. I thought I hit the wrong button. Yeah, no, the ritual didn't work. Because all the steps weren't uh, completed. Boom, let's go. All right, good start. Good start. I don't think Angie's ritual succeeded. According to the Necronomicon Monokuma showed us, you have to burn the Necronomicon in the ritual. I'm so smart. After preparing the effigy, burn the Necronomicon to ashes. These clouds should be mindful of carbon monoxide poisoning. Sprinkle the ashes on the effigy and repeat the name of the deceased three times. And then the ritual is complete. ritual had succeeded, the book would have been gone. So she must have been killed before the ritual was complete, since the book was still intact. All right, that was actually easier to clear up than I thought. Then, going to think Rantaro probably not culprit. That's a good thought. Oh, I guess you're right. Well, duh. There's no way a dead person could resurrect. Now, hold on a second. I can't let that comment stand. Oh, no. Sure. Everybody knows that you can't bring the dead back to life. But it's easy at the Ultimate Academy, as long as you use the Necronomicon. What are you talking about? There's no way that's possible. But it's true. I never lie about motives. I am interested if there is a way for that to, to be true. Like, the only way that makes sense is if this is just like another game world, like the second game. But like, I don't think that they would do that again, so... Hmm, I don't know. Daddy said so, so he can't be wrong. Raising the dead is totally possible. Man, I can't believe you guys wasted such a perfectly good motive. You should have let me use it to bring Monodum back to life. Uh. Monodum is still alive. <laughs> I was going to say, he's going to tell him. All right, I think Monotar is the one that dies this chapter. Oh, so resurrecting the dead was actually possible this whole time? There's no way it's possible. There's no way that could happen, idiots. Monokuma is trying to confuse us. Let's hurry up and find out who the Blackened is. If our transfer student isn't the culprit, then blame falls to one of us. Yes. Who? Who did it? Step aside, Half Pint. I'll handle this. Will you? I don't know about Tenko, but I'm pretty fucking sure Keo murdered Angie. Ooh, Keo is the first one being brought up. That makes me think that he is probably not the culprit. I mean, it is early enough that it could circle back around and be him, but my suspicion of him just went down like 20%. What? Why? I've, I have my. I have my. I have. I am keeping a close eye on Samugi though. I I I don't know. I I just feel something off about her. Like in the way that she's trying to direct the conversations. I, I don't know. I might be overthinking it, but we'll see. We'll see. Don't play dumb with me, creep show. I already know what happened. Yeah, the fact that Miu is saying this is like obviously she's like always wrong, so. Alright, what do you think you know? Let's get to work. Uh the culprit used a katana to kill Angie. Yes. And it was found in Keo's research lab. You are correct. Which makes you, Keo, automatically suspicious. That's but fair. Could have taken that katana, you see. So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who cared about that thing, Keo. Mm. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. Went to the classroom, broke in. Oh, okay, broke in. Murdered the fuck out of Angie. 
Okay, okay. I think broken probably the front door is gonna argue against that. Or we fit the facts of the case. Alright. The cult is a kind of challenge. And it was found in Keo's research lab. Uh-huh. But anyone could have taken it to Tana to see. She arrested Katana was the murderer. Yeah. The only one who turned out the thing, so. About some katana. Imagine like that's the thing you have to argue. You have to argue that he did care about it. The classroom. Oh, not that one. The Q had a Kira not Angie still would have let him into her lab. No. Could. I oh, okay. So it's the movie's account, the one about saying that. Okay. All right. Me was just stupid. Me was even stupider than I thought. Okay. We need Samugi's account saying that uh, Angie only lets people from the from the student council, and I thought that was common knowledge. Okay, that's that's kind of on me, but like that's fine. Uh, the game made it pretty clear after one wrong guess, so that's okay. There we go. But yeah, but she says break in. So like, and then when I'm like, no, he couldn't have broken in. She's like, well, Angie let him in. I was like, that's not breaking in. So Mia's just stupid. Isn't that right, Tsumugi? Yeah. Before Angie locked herself up in her research lab, she said she wasn't going to open up for anyone but student council members. And Kyo is not a member. She wouldn't have opened the door for him. Yeah. Wasn't... Was Himiko still guarding out front, or no, no, no? She must have left at some point. Kyo couldn't have killed Angie even if he wanted to. I had no desire to kill her in the first place. So whoever killed Angie must have been one of the student council members, yeah? That makes sense. Uh, I was doing a bit to lead you to the right answer. Can't believe you actually got it. Yeah, of course, of course you were. Oh, how clever! Content, no. You can just ignore her, Gonta. The remaining student council members are Gonta, Kibo, Sumugi, and Himiko. Yeah, that is interesting. I don't see it being anyone other than s out of those four. Like, Himiko, if Himiko is the one that actually did it, she is a phenomenal actor. The way that she is so angry about Angie's and, and Tanko's death. So, that would have to be some incredible acting. Sumugi? Kibo? I don't know, I don't, I don't see Gonta being the one, unless Gonta's, like, entire personality is a facade, which I just don't see being the case. But we'll see. Oh, Himiko. She was besties with Angie. I trust their friendship. You guys do too, right? Friendship is magic. Yeah, of course. Can we trust their friendship so readily? Obviously. Let's believe in them. Kokichi, you're acting weird. I guess you always do that, but you're acting weird. Stop it. <laughs> that trims our list of suspects down to three. Gonta, Samugi, and Kibo. Yep, yep. The culprit is one of those three people. Hmm. You mean one of those two people. Because a robot ain't people, Jack. A robot is perfectly capable of killing somebody just as much as anybody else. I will let that remark slide. Why? Anyway, <laughs> you shouldn't. Aren't these accusations just a tad too hasty? What else? The culprit should confess already. Gonta, Keyboy, or Samugi? Well... No, not Gonta. Gonta would never kill Angie. Yeah, Gonta's a gentleman. <clears throat> you shouldn't suspect either of us. Wait, why shouldn't we suspect you? Hey, stick up for me too. I hate the way that they treat Kibo. I really do. This is like, Kokichi was like the first one, but like literally everybody treats him like garbage. And I'm like, I strongly dislike that. As like an overall narrative thing that continues to happen. Torture Gonta if you don't believe. Torture might be a bit too far, but Gonta and I aren't the culprits. And I'm not the culprit either. Jeez. Gonta not the culprit. Oh gosh, they're all gonna yell at me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right, so you must consider other possibilities. Hmm. Surely there must be suspects on the side of the student council. That's utterly impossible for us. So maybe the dead chick can't be the culprit. Why? Only student council members had access. I was like, Kokichi could get in there. 
Once I saw the options of Truth Bullets, I was like, okay, this is actually a little bit easier than uh, than I thought. No, it wasn't just student council members that could have opened that lab door. And also, like, uh, silencing the loud voice, like, automatically was really, really clutch. Hmm. What was it you said earlier about Kyo opening the door, Shuichi? Unless you're a student council member, you can't enter Angie's lab, right? I was referring to Kyo. He couldn't have done it, but you could have. Because I saw you open the classroom lock by picking it. Yeah, I think Kokichi uh, would be an absolute idiot to show off that he could lockpick if he did that exact same thing to kill Angie. So, unless Kokichi is uh, very, very dumb, I, I'm not going to believe that. Kokichi pulled out some thin needles, stuck them into the key of the lock. Click, click, click. Clack! There, open says me! Oh, that happened? I totally forgot. Uh-huh. So you're going to pretend you don't remember, huh? <laughs> Quit glaring at me like that. Of course I remember. Yeah, I did it. I I murdered Angie. Angie. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh my gosh. Wait, what? What did you just say? I picked the lock to her lab, snuck into the room, and then, wham, killed Angie. That doesn't even make sense, because I feel like whoever killed her probably went in through the back door anyway, just because of where the body placement is, and like the katana and all that sort of stuff. The culprit was me, all along. What? What, what are you saying? <laughs> is this some kind of- Yeah, I was like, I, how long does he let this go for until he's just like, just kidding? Nah, no joke. I thought that if I confessed, I could atone for my sins. And it helped. I feel so much better. Whew. Wait, so Kokichi really <laughs> is culprit? Yeah, sure. No, he's lying. I think. Maybe? Hey, you might actually be right this time, Mew. He's lying. I'm certain of it. No, no. Definitely not a lie. I killed Angie. Okichi, why are you like this? You're gonna make me have to prove that you're lying. You're, that's such an unnecessary step. Why are you like this? Shouldn't you guys believe the culprit when they confess? Then let me ask you, culprit. How did you lock the room? Huh? Well, it's the same as opening it. You pick the door closed from the outside. I don't think you can pick a lock closed. No, that doesn't make sense. Huh? What does it make sense? Can't you lock a door by picking it? I actually don't know, but I th I think no, but I actually don't know. Maybe, but that's not how the culprit locked the room. They used a different method. Ooh, okay. All right, we'll get into this now. What different method? The sliding lock? Yeah, Mumbles. Use your big boy voice and explain yourself. Uh, there were two doors to the classroom, and the one locked last was... Uh... I mean, I guess the back door. That's it. Yeah, I, I still don't exactly know how, but it definitely seems like you might be able to just like lock the That's the back door from the outside. Locked room mystery. The back door had a sliding lock. Yes. How was it locked from the outside? The culprit used a certain tool. Hmm. Okay. Oh, mine, mine. Oh, we're doing this. Okay. Uh, well, let's just start going to town. Uh, okay, so that's that. Okay, so there's some tools down here. We should probably start clearing some of this out. Oh, gosh. Okay, that works. That works. We can get that out of the way. Uh, we can get that. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can completely uncover it now. Oh, there we go. I'm so good at this game. I did that definitely on purpose. Also, I don't even think that's the real answer. I think the answer is over here. Boom. Oh gosh. Let's just start clicking away. Is that... Uh, cause I think it's this, right? I like... 
Oh, I can like break. There we go. I forgot. I can like break one at a time. I like, I'm pretty sure it was the katana. Alright, I I got a little bit better. Alright, now I, I kind of understand how to do my mind a little bit more. It's not much about strategy, just find the right answer and then force through it. The culprit used that to hit the knob of the sliding lock to lock the door. Okay, yeah, so it is just something like that because it's like really loose. Alright, that's actually it didn't turn out to be as complicated as I thought. So the gold leaf was on the sliding lock because because when the katana hit the lock, some of the gold leaf rubbed off on it. Uh. The gold leaf on that katana did peel rather easily. Hmm, that evidence rings a bell. Specifically, a school bell. Oh, yeah? Huh? Are you talking about a <laughs> What school was it? Uh, way back in the first game. The very first uh, chapter, even. But I like the past. Well, some of it. I like the past game. I, I should make it clear. I like the past in terms of what they're talking about. My own past. Eh, hit or miss. So that means the culprit used the katana to move the sliding lock, right? Yeah. But wait, how did they move it with the katana? And from outside Angie's lab? Yeah, that also, I don't think makes sense because well, the katana was inside, right? The clue that might give us the answer is the layout of the area itself. Okay. Hmm. It was an odd setup after all. Oh, the katana wasn't even in the door. It was literally in Kaede. The katana stabbed into the effigy. The effigies hung upside down. And you didn't do that as part of the ritual? No. Nowhere in the Necronomicon did it say you had to hang the effigies. But I mean, you could if you wanted to, for reasons. If it was not part of the ritual, then it must have been for a different purpose, right? Okay, now this is going to start being a little more complicated. This is about what I expected. What could that have been? I don't know. Culver somehow used the setup to lock the room. In that case, I needed to know the reason behind every step of that setup. Hmm... If I do that, the way the culprit locked the room should be clear. Oh, we're going driving. Okay. Let's go. Let's see if this gets any more, like, difficult or not. Like, probably not. Run into some letters. Try to not run into some cars. Oh, I missed. I was looking at all the cars in the future, just like trying to make sure that I don't hit them uh, moving forward. That's fine. Uh, I was gonna say, can I just I'm like I'm like one to two letters away? Yeah, here we go. Who turned the handle of the sliding lock, or what turned the handle of the sliding lock? Hmm. I don't know. How does Hilt the effigy's hand? No! Okay. Oh, that makes sense because of the, the goalie plating. Alright, I was starting to overthink it. I was like, is this something? Is this like a trick question? Okay, so the Tata's Hilt. Alright, thankfully you just have to start the question again. You don't have to do the whole thing again. That's okay. We should be fine. We have so much time. Yeah. Well, the time's not even, like, going down. Oh, there it is. I was like, we have, like, six minutes. Although, that might be for, like, the whole thing. That might not be just for this, uh, little minigame here. I like this sort of desert, uh, setting. This looks cool. And so far, there's, like, no other cars. It's just us in the open road. Enjoying, uh, a relaxing drive, hitting some letters. Uh... Oh, gosh. All right, well, don't try and go drive in the sand if it's not work out well. What was done to make the katana turn the lock? So did... Was it, like, swung? Because, like, it's in... If it's stuck in Kaede, did Kaede, like, swing from the top to into the door? Or something like that? 
I was stabbed into the effigy. Sliding lock was tampered with. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then I think the last question might... There might have been some sort of swinging motion because it's hanging down to lock the door. But how do they swing that down from the outside anyway? I don't really know. Or did they create a situation where Angie would slide it down or, like, knock it down and lock the door? I think I could believe that. Let's, let's you know, let's actually get the answer to, the, to this question first before I start making assumptions about what happened after. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, we're hitting all these letters. Car, you better got my way. These are my letters, not yours. Okay, and it's just like how... How was the effigy manipulated to make the katana affect the lock? It was hung. Upside down. Thinking time? I hate thinking. All right, so swinging back and forth, making it fall, spinning it. Uh, no. All right, so that's all right. I think it's swinging it back and forth, but like I also thought maybe it like fell and swung, so I didn't know which one they were going for. If it's spinning it, then I'm just completely wrong. Oh wow. Okay, <laughs> I'm just completely wrong. Interesting. All right, now I need a little bit more explanation to figure out what exactly happened, because I don't exactly get this. I need a little bit more like a visual or just someone to paint a better visual picture. But once it clicks, it'll click. That's it. The reason the culprit stuck the katana into the effigy was so that it would hit the sliding lock as the effigy spun. Okay. Effigy spun? So it didn't like swing. I'm thinking more like like a like a pendulum, you That's know, like right. goes back and forth. You spun the effigy, the rope it was hanging from would twist. Okay. Hey, I asked for a visual and I am getting it. That's awesome. Then, if you let it go, the rope would unwind and the effigy would spin the other way. Oh, so like they just like quickly twisted it, ran out the door, and then because it like it's just going to untwist by itself, so you have like a second to like get out of there. Like it's believable that uh, that you that you could, but like you would definitely have to make a run for it and do that. But okay. And of course, the katana would spin with it. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. I see. So the culprit used the katana's counterspin to push the lock into place. That's smart. The culprit simply needed to spin the effigy's rope and then swiftly leave. Yeah. This would cause the spinning katana to hit the sliding lock. And thus was the back door of an empty classroom locked from the inside. Ah. I like it. I like it. Yes. That's how a crab <laughs> was locked. By using the effigy <clears throat> with a katana. A plan born from the heart of a sword traveling through the air to intercept us. Who thinks of that though? Like how do you how do you think of that as a way to like do this? Oh, but could it have moved the slide lock so easily? Yeah. The sliding lock was pretty loose. A little push could move it. As long as the spinning katana hit the lock, it would have slid into position. Yeah, I'm not worried about that not Even if the being possible. The couple times, they could keep trying until it locked. Yeah, and I mean, if it's probably spinning more than once, so like it has, it's probably going to hit the lock multiple times if anything. Which is why the culprit chose to strike at nighttime as to avoid detection. Do you avoid detection as? <laughs> As it's been clearly pointed out, uh, I think over half the people were, like, out at nighttime at some point. There's, like, nobody listens to the rules of staying in at nighttime. Yes, since the student council prohibited anyone from walking around at nighttime. Are you saying it's the student council's fault? I didn't say that. But you could interpret it that way. In any case, the culprit probably used the murder weapon for this trick. It had to have been the right length to hit the sliding lock from the effigy. Okay. The culprit couldn't find a blade long enough in my lab, so they settled for the katana. That makes sense. The other effigies were only hung up, so we think it was some kind of ceremony. That's a lot of work. Did they kill Angie and then do all of this extra work to hang up and create this elaborate setup? 
That is crazy and a lot of effort. It's definitely possible, but wow. I'm kind of impressed. He did say earlier that he could have picked the lock closed. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. <laughs> I mean, no, if you're doing this setup and, and that whole katana thing, if that was not it, and then uh, that would just be crazy. But I can't imagine the culprit would have done all this just for a distraction. If that's the case, then Kokichi's confession earlier was actually... Seriously? You fucking lied again? Of course he did. Cough it up, Kokichi. Oh, man, you guys got me. Okay, I'm not the culprit. But why do you want to be the culprit so bad? If you want to be the culprit, just kill somebody. 